Hello, my name's Ian Anderson Gray, and in this episode of the Confident Live Marketing Show, we're talking about how to podcast with confidence. I've got Kate Cocker on the show, who is my guest today. So we'll be with you just after this. Welcome to the Confident Live Marketing Show with Ian Anderson Gray. Helping you level up your impact, authority, and profits through the power of confident live video. Optimize your mindset and communication and increase your confidence in front of the camera. Get confident with the tech and gear. And get confident with the content, content and, and marketing. marketing. Together, we can go live! Well, hello. Very excited to be here. We're talking today about podcasting with confidence. And I've got Kate Cocker on the show to talk about that. So we'll be talking about that very, very shortly, but just a few things before we start. Uh, first of all, to let you know about the podcast. Of course, this is a live show, but it's also a podcast. We go live every Tuesdays and Thursdays, but the podcast is every Friday. If you go to iag.me forward slash podcast, you can follow that, you can listen to that, and also read all the blog posts associated with that podcast. And next episode, actually, so this will be on Thursday if you're watching live or next Friday, I've got Ash Borland on the show. This is the next episode. We're going to be talking about how to stand out from your competition where there's so much noise out there. We want to get our name, uh, get our faces out there, get our message out there. So I'm really looking forward to speaking with Ash. I was on his show a few weeks ago. So we'll be talking about that. And today's show is sponsored by my good friends at Restream. Now, we're broadcasting, I'm broadcasting to loads of different channels. I'm broadcasting to YouTube, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, VK, I don't know, Twitch, so many different places. It's very exciting. And with a new service called Restream Pairs, this allows you to share that with your guest. Uh, and they can then broadcast it to their channel. So today we're also broadcasting to Kate's YouTube channel. If you're watching on Kate's cha YouTube channel, hello, my name's Ian. Nice to see you. I'm excited to be here. Uh, so here's a little bit more about Restream. The Confident Live Marketing Podcast is proudly sponsored by Restream. Restream is the complete multi-streaming suite for entrepreneurs. It's the easiest way to broadcast live to over 30 destinations at the same time, including Facebook, YouTube, LinkedIn, Twitch, and so much more. Restream Studio makes it so simple to stream directly from your browser. Bring in guests and add your branding, videos, and graphics, and view and highlight comments from your destinations all at the click of a button. Take Restream for a test drive and get your first month completely free at iag.me forward slash Restream. Well, it's time to introduce Kate to you. I'm very excited about bringing Kate onto the show. She is the presenter coach and she wants you to be heard. Kate helps entrepreneurs get brilliant at speaking in public, whether that be on camera, on stage or on mic. Podcasts, though, are her passion, and she works closely with business owners to create compelling audio that generates leads and sales. Welcome to the show, Kate. Great to hello, have you. Ian. Hello, hello, how are you? I'm doing really well. I'm I'm excited to have you on the show, and uh, excited that you're you're just down the road. We were just talking before we started. Discovered. I know. I'm in Cheadle, and you're in Cholton. Chalton, Cheadle Chalton. Both, they kind yeah, of both of us in Greater Manchester, loving yes. the northern weather. <laughs> exactly. I, I actually, yeah, it's not that great today, is it? But anyway, yeah, not, it enough felt like that. autumn for the first time today. Didn't it? <laughs> <laughs> We're going to have to put our heating on and all that kind of yeah, stuff. Yeah, well, I put my. I, oh, this sounds very posh. I've bor I'm borrowing my mother-in-law's cars at the moment, and she's got heated seats. And I realised today oh, was wow. the first time I put the heated seats on. So yeah. <laughs> I know that's very posh, isn't it? <laughs> it is very posh, but I remember, yeah, my dad used to have, he had a company car and he, we were very excited. I think I was about eight or nine and we, yeah, we put the heated seats on for the first time. I've never actually been in the car since though that's had heated seats. So there you go. Anyway. You go. <laughs> we digress. We digress. We're talking about uh, podcasting and uh, talking about how to do it confidently. Uh, so mm. if you're listening, watching Welcome. It's great to have you here. Let us know your questions. I can see that MC Lito is here from Japan. We are a worldwide audience here. Uh, tried out Restream Pairs for the first time on Twitch last week. I'd love to know, how did you get on? Did it work really well? 
Uh, one thing, by the way, just uh, just a quick thing, when it comes to restream bears, do be careful about if you're using epidemic sound because uh, for your music, because you might have permission to do it on your channels, but you you might your guest might not have that permission. So with music, just be careful that you do link all of that and sort it out before you do it. I speak from experience. Oh, but we're, that okay. lovely experience. <laughs> I know. We learn We learn from these things, don't we? So I, I would love to know from you, how did you get into this mad world of podcasting? Tell, tell us a little bit more about what you do, because I know you work, you don't just work with entrepreneurs and businesses. There's, there's lo- yeah. loads of different types of people that you work with. Yeah, tell us how I you think- got into it. I think like many of us in in mm. this land of uh, working from home and working on our own businesses, we, we actually probably all of us do a little bit more than what we say we do. So I do quite a lot of things. But I started in radio in the late 90s, actually, very late 90s, and fell in love with it completely, fell in love with the people, fell in love with everything about it. And then since then came out of university, did a load of radio. And when podcasting came along, I remember we were all, you know, Podcasting back then, we're talking 15 years ago now, really. I came to Manchester because we launched XFM Manchester. So I became the specialist producer at XFM Manchester, looking after some really great presenters and really great shows. And that was the time at which podcasting was really starting to come to light. We, we, you know, when we launched the station, all the staff got given an iPod that was engraved on the back. And that was just to listen to music. And, you know, this idea of podcasting was coming around. And the way that we used to podcast was, you know, you'd find a mate with an FTP site and go, can I put my podcast on there? And you would probably put one show out, which we soon became very aware of the fact really wasn't a podcast. You know, a podcast is something that you do repeatedly, not just, oh, we did this show on the radio. Let's bung it on Apple iTunes. So, so yeah, so I've been involved in podcasting from really, really early days. And then when it started to become something that we thought, oh, this actually is a thing and people are listening. That was when, you know, we suddenly realized as radio industry professionals that if we left our jobs, that we, there was, we could all broadcast. We didn't need permission to broadcast anymore. We could make our own thing. And that was when my husband launched his podcast called Egg Chasers, which was a rugby podcast, which you can hear loads of now. But at the time, no one was doing rugby podcasts like he was doing them. So we worked all that out together. He did a couple of goes at it and then stumbled upon this. And this sounds really classic now. Three guys who love rugby talking about rugby in a way that's funny (laughs) format. And he was the first one doing it. And all of a sudden there were like 70,000 listens a week. And you're like, whoa, this is a really big deal. And then I was helping. I helped a friend with hers. I helped another person with theirs. And it just started to really snowball because... Making audio is making audio. Finding audiences is actually where it's quite tricky. But this, I really learned from Tim's experience, my husband's experience, that, um, what do I call it? Original space. Getting, grabbing original space is really vital. When a new platform comes along, getting in quick is a really vital way to become the first at it. Because, you know, if Tim was launching his podcast now, now that the podcast landscape has massively changed, it would be much more of a battle to find that space. But because he was the first one, he gets all that heritage listening. And so, you know, in terms of the sponsorship and stuff that he gets, it's really powerful for the audience because, sorry, it's really powerful for the sponsor because the engagement with the audience is really strong. So we're talking, that podcast has probably been going about five, six years now, maybe more actually. And then a couple of years later, so we're talking about three, three and a half years ago, I had an idea to do a podcast called Everyday Positivity. I think at the time it was called Everyday PMA. And it was short. It was like, it was only ever going to be daily, two minute episodes, just reminder to people to be kind to themselves. And I kind of parked it because I thought, "Mm, maybe not, you know, I'm helping all these other entrepreneurs with their podcasts. I'm working with them with their speaking. They're asking me, can you make a podcast? I'm like, yeah, sure. Just kind of like, this is something that I do old hat. (laughs) I could just, I could do this with my eyes closed. Park it six, a few months later, I'm on a Facebook group a podcast Facebook group and a company from San Francisco were like, we specialize in Amazon flash briefings. Does anyone have any short form content? And I was like, actually I do. And I've written 30 episodes without even looking at a book. I think there's legs. It's called Everyday PMA. They went, call it Everyday Positivity because that's what people are searching for. And so I was like, again, grasping at that original space to get onto Alexa and to get onto Amazon flash briefings. Like Mm. first to me was really important. And I was right. You know, I got in there, we did four months just as a flash briefing. 
And so the audience I've got on Amazon Alexa is huge. You know, it's actually, it's a really lovely meaty audience. And you go on to amazon.co.uk now and you type in, you know, Kate Cocker Everyday Positivity. I'm like, it's like the first thing that comes up because we put on all the work. And then we then moved it out to being a podcast and I've got a community with that now. And then as all this is going on and I've got this kind of social proof of I make this podcast and it's doing really well, more and more of my business owners who I'm talking to about speaking in public are saying, can you make a podcast? Can you make a podcast? So early last year, I went, right, this is going to be more central to my business. Did the podcast and then lockdown happened. And then a lot of those other business owners kind of just converted straight into let's just do podcasts because I've got no speaking gigs. So, so that's how it all came about, really. Wow, that's that is cool. Is that a good story? I don't know. Is that that felt very long? (laughs) It is. No, it is good. I'm always fascinated because we all have these, we all have these journeys that you know. If you were to speak to yourself like ten years ago, would you have a clue what you'd be doing ten years time? You, well, you might have had a clue, but it was. It's probably turned out very, very differently to what you yeah. intended. I mean, I uh, started out yeah. making jingles in radio. That was where I started. I'd make the little sweepers that you hear between songs and all yeah. of that. That was what I did. I wrote those and made those. Um, so it stood me in good stead. Having that technical capability stood me in good stead. And the thing I love, love, love about radio is that I got to work with presenters and help them be brilliant. And that's absolutely the fundamental of what I do. Like I love yeah. helping people speak in public that's what i love doing the most so yeah i wanted to talk to you about that so you you help uh correct me if i'm wrong you help businesses entrepreneurs to yeah. launch podcasts so yeah, you yeah, help yeah. with the technical side of things do you help yeah. with editing and all that uh, yeah or, uh, so yeah. so it does essentially with the presenter coach there is a training element so it's more of a supporting you to make your podcast in a way that makes sense to you so it could be that you're really good at the uh, recording element and you can get all yourself all set up. And then, um, I now have a team who can edit for you and with you, or if you want the whole podcast making for you, I actually, I've just started up a business called purposeful podcasts where we do the full thing and I'm working with people specifically to, you know, provide this platform for them to get their message out that then really feeds into their business. So the presenter coach maintains its kind of coaching element and then purposeful podcasts is more of the production company element. I do that with a, PR company in Manchester called Roland Dransfield. So we work together with with mainly their clients and build building their podcasts for them and for for them as a business or slightly bigger businesses. Awesome. Well, we 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 should definitely talk about the mindset side of things and yeah. confidence in a in a minute. But I just want wanted to kind of clarify two things really. Uh, first of all, I'd love to know what is your definition of a podcast because I think there's so <laughs> much misconceptions about this. It seems like an obvious question, but like some people say you can have like video podcasts and or it's just audio only or you download it from somewhere. You can put a podcast on YouTube. I, I mean, I. I have my own views. What, what, how would you define a podcast? I think we have to be open to the idea that things will evolve and change as an audio file, someone who loves audio. I went through a pe- period about a year ago where I was like, why can't I find this podcast? This person says they've got a podcast and I'm on Spotify and I'm on Apple podcast. I cannot find it. And it turns out it's just on YouTube and it's a video podcast or horrifically titled a vodcast. Um, and And I kind of was a little bit resistant to that as a definition. But the reality is people are listening to podcasts through YouTube. So some do have a video element. So I think in terms of definition, it makes it tricky, actually. I hadn't, I've not been asked that question, Ian. Um, I think (laughs) think it it has to be, it has to be more than one episode. (laughs) And I think it has to have a real purpose. It has to have a, a theme. So the business is like your own. You're dealing with topics that are really essential to the audience that you want to attract and the people that you already work with. Um, if you're doing something, I, I kind of see that there are two sorts of podcasts. Well, there's this business podcast, which is about the business and getting that message out there. And then there's these content podcasts, which is the business. So the content podcast model is, you know, maybe made by the BBC or maybe made by someone who's got a story to tell, you know, the gimlets of the world, and they build that audience and sell to that audience. So they build that listenership and and sell the sponsorship or they'll sell the, um, you know, live reads or they'll they'll sell um, stuff to that audience. And that the business podcast model is more, you know, it's not about growing a massive audience. It's about going, these are the people that will have, Im- I will impact and will be drawn to my business if this 
podcast does what they need. It's basically content marketing. You know, it's that it's that how can I create a transformation for this audience and become useful and interesting so that then I can sell my services or my product to them. So so I think they're slightly different models, but both of them really sit in that they have a purpose. You know, like serial is one story and it has a purpose. It is episode after episode after episode. You know, your podcast is about uh, confident live marketing. You know, it, it it has a purpose. So I think that's the definition, something that has a clear purpose. And then it doesn't matter about length. So mine's daily, for example. Um, but, you know, I have clients who do fortnightly, some do monthly. So it just depends on what you're trying to achieve, I think. I think that's so important, having that plan right from yeah. the beginning. You need to know why are you doing this? What are your reasons for doing this? And I, that's the first thing that when with my clients that I talk about, you know, whether it's a live show or podcast, you need to know yeah. that. Uh, otherwise, it's just, it's, yeah, there's, it, there's nothing worse than a, a podcast or any piece of content without any kind of purpose. So you talked about in the good old days when your husband launched his podcast, it was yeah. so much easier. And I, and, and I hear like um, uh, easy, Cliff, wasn't it? Cliff Ravenscraft uh, was telling me like a few months ago, he's a big podcasting name, that when he launched his podcast, you know, there were tens of thousands of people downloading every day. Yeah. Now, that's not, in most people's cases, the, the situation today. If you launch a podcast, you're probably not going to get that. But so that's, I'm painting a very depressing picture here deliberately because I'm hoping you've got some good news for us or, 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 or you know, how, how have things, how have things changed? And is there, is there any hope? <laughs> oh gosh there's always hope of course I mean, the there thing is. is i mean okay so it depends how you frame it i suppose it depends what angle yeah. you look at it from so yes you are not going to launch a podcast unless you are uh you know very famous and have a massive profile already that's going to get a massive cut through straight away um if you are launching a podcast for your business or if you don't have a podcast for your business you are missing out on the fact that you have people that you can get to and engage with at a deeper level. I think the things that I think about now are, you know, there's two and a half, uh, probably more now, two and a half million podcasts in the world. I think there's something like 850,000 of those are active. So that already gives you a bit of a, an idea that there's still space in the market for you. There are still titles I can't believe don't exist as well. It's amazing. There are some titles that there are like five different type, five different podcasts with the same title. Um, but there's other podcast. There's other, you know, we, I'm about to launch a podcast that we've done the title for, and I'm like, I can't believe there's not a podcast called this. Um, but if you think about it, there are 37 million YouTube channels, right? And there are goodness knows how many billion books in the world. So in terms of getting that original space. Yes, it's useful if you can find it. Yes, it's useful if you can do an idea for the first time. But it also shows that there are people listening, that there is people there are people um, out there who want your stuff, that there is even more room for growth. And so still is now a time to now is still a time, there we go, right way around, to get a podcast launched because there's still people listening. And I think it's something like it's less than 20% of the UK listen to podcasts. So that's, again, there's a massive growth area there. And more and more people are aware of them. You know, now that the big names are really doing it properly, people like BBC Sounds, you know, those areas mean that people outside of that younger end of the audience can find a podcast and know what to do with it. So there's areas that you can really maneuver into. Fundamentally, I always talk to businesses and I talk about broadcasting to themselves first so broadcast to your own clients first because that is the that's almost like the red button that you press to create the cloud so if you can help the people that you have already and you can use the mailing lists that you have already and you can use the uh, marketing sort of lines that you have already this will be an opportunity for you to engage more deeply with the audience that you have and to then give them something that means that they then go oh you've got to listen to ian's podcast or you've got to watch his live stream and 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 that's where your growth will really come from plus yeah you know if you get 20 people listening if you had 20 people in a room listening to you every week you'd be very happy wouldn't you <laughs> so you know it's it's it kind of it's it's those sorts of attitudes and those sorts of thoughts i think that really are important for podcasting now and yes there is definitely hope i knew you'd say that because you've got the positivity 
podcast. <laughs> What's it called again? The Everyday the Positivity. Everyday Positivity. Yeah, there yeah. you go. So I, I, I deliberately, I, I hope people don't think I'm like a like this normally, a depressive character, but I wanted to paint like the, the bleak landscape and then be and you allow, allow you to lift us up out of that because there but is hope. It, mm. Yeah, but I think it's really not, that's really relevant right now because I think especially over lockdown when everybody all that they could do was a podcast or you know you know ways to sort of keep the business and feeling like you're doing something alive um podcast was where it was at and I think it's really easy to look into the world now and go right I'd like a pod I'd like to do a podcast and then you look and you go god everyone's doing one mm. oh no there's no point I just think there's always a point you know there you're, is you're looking, you're looking to build an audience of something rather than nothing right and if you don't have a podcast you've got nothing and I, I think one one thing that I hear from some people, and I I've, I have to admit, I I did have this feeling maybe a few years ago. I don't have it so much now. Is you look at podcasts out there, and you see, look at the big names. I don't know, it could be like Pat Flynn and and all these people. Yeah. And you think, well, I could I could never I could never be like that. I could never do it. You know, com- comparison syndrome. And I think what, what people forget is that actually not everyone wants to listen to the big names. Some people just want to listen to people who are on, who are in the same world as them, people that they can aspire to. Uh, And so I, I think there's always a room for, for, for more voices and a different take on things. Katie Simpson. um, Katie. I said, (laughs) did Kate say her podcast is daily? Maybe I misheard. If not, wow and i have to admit i feel some whenever anyone says like a daily podcast i just <laughs> yeah i feel similar <laughs> it is a daily podcast isn't it it's only two minutes it's yeah. it's, it's very low production <laughs> it's funny because now you there are again similar to what i was saying about my husband with his rugby podcast um I have a daily podcast that when I started, really very few people were doing it. Three years later, Deepak Chopra's doing them, uh, Headspace do them, you know, Spotify, I've got a guy called Niall doing them. You know, there's there's loads of really short, well, we call them short casts now. And actually I listen to the others and I think, oh, maybe I should put some music on mine. But my, the point of mine is it's it's, I want to be the voice in your head that makes you feel better, right? So I keep it really minimal. And I just do some really strong content planning. I've got really good at planning ahead, knowing what I want to say, knowing where there are certain awareness days, if I need some help with planning that content. Um, If I go away, I'll record a few weeks in advance, but usually I work about two or three days in advance, just because again, it's that sense of, I want to be really, uh, you know, I want to be really in line with the way of the world. And a lot of my audience are in, in America. I know that from, my Amazon Echo stats. And so I have to be really aware of what's going on in America and when they've got Mondays off and all that kind of thing. Cause you know, if I miss, if I miss Labor Day and they're all off on holiday, I'm going, Hey, it's a great start to the week. You know, it doesn't really sit quite right. Um, yeah. And, but yeah, it, it sounds like more work than it is, but you really do get into a rhythm and it doesn't take me long these days. And actually, you know, more and more, it's the sort of thing that when I see business owners going, I don't have time, I almost want to say to them, gosh, if you did a two minute tip podcast daily, you'd find you'd be able to turn that around probably a lot quicker than a 45 minute hour long, you know, interview because mm. of all the prep you have to do. It's different. It's a, it's a mindset thing, I think, at the it end is, of the day, definitely. isn't it? Because, like, I'm to, prioritizing to, it. Yeah, so it's, to me, immediately I think, oh my goodness, daily, that seems really stressful. But then I think about what I'm doing, like two live shows a week, one li- podcast a week and a blog. And if I'd, if I'd said that to myself like a, a two years ago, I said, oh no, I, there's no way I could do that. But I've developed a system and a process that yeah. that works for me. And also, I think it also helps if you have a team later yes, down the does. line. So yeah. you don't have to do everything. I mean, presumably with you, you don't have to do the editing and all that no. kind of stuff. You, yeah. Well, the got- edits, the edits are usually like they take me ten minutes anyway because they're very short, and I know where I've messed up, <laughs> so I know where I've started again and gone. No, that wasn't right. Um, but a couple of years ago, I needed to put an award entry together, and I used a producer called Will Dell, and it was very apparent that he really understood me, and so I quickly snaffled snuffled him up. I went, come on, work with me. So I, I use him to do the basics of the podcast. I mean, it's, it's really not a hard edit. It's, it's literally a two to three minute episode with a couple of cuts in it. I just take out a couple of ums, take out a couple of false starts. Um, but he, yeah, again, and that's, that, that helped me grow the team again. And it's really nice 
to be able to just throw the edit at someone, just like you were saying, like if you can find someone who can do, who understands you, understands what you're doing, understands what you're trying to achieve, and you can just go, right, I've done it. And then you don't have to think about it again. That's a really, that really is a time saver. Oh, it's a wonderful feeling. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I had to edit my podcast uh, recently for, for other reasons, for, for other reasons I won't go into, but uh, oh my goodness, it was so, I, I, I used to love editing, but I think just the joy of this, delegating it away uh, yeah. and and so yeah going back to that I just want to say and hello to want, Colette by the way oh, sorry hi, it's just like Colette has said hello a while ago and I just haven't said hello to you but uh, welcome Colette great to see you here happy you say happy to be tuned in today it's, it's wonderful to have you here watching on YouTube and we've also got Stephen Healy saying we all have different stories to tell our perspective is unique Absolutely. and I totally agree with you Stephen. A hundred percent I love that and that to me you know I one of the biggest things is in uh, podcast land is the interview podcast and you hear into uh, podcast critics going oh goodness another interview podcast and you know fair point you know you do need to have a niche and you do need to be really clear on what your audience is getting so it is is just you can't just afford to just have a chat anymore but everybody's story and angle is different. You know, your experience as a business owner is going to be different to the next business owner with a bit of a Venn diagram, I suppose. But your stories are really interesting. And that's that's where the presenter coaching comes in because I work really hard with my clients to go, okay, so we're doing an interview now. Think about the questions that you're asking. Think there are, there are all these different ways of asking a question. My favorite, by the way, is the simplest one, which is, um, is it cold or were you scared? Those are really great questions. But actually, if you tell your story as a business owner, you're doing two things. One, you're letting your audience know a bit about you so they can buy into you. And that's what you need. You want your clients to do or new clients to do. And number two, when you tell your story, that is absolutely instant um, inspiration for the person that you're interviewing to tell theirs or to tell more of theirs. So it's a really useful interview technique. And so then that makes it different, right? You know, you, you need to get into those niches details and stories i think to make yours really unique absolutely and uh katie says pat flynn actually talks about the draw of the ordinary person in his podcast one of his most listened to episodes is when he interviewed uh, a couple who started up their online business from a very humble beginnings one was a football coach and the other was a librarian and yeah he was talking about i was on a panel with him yesterday and he was talking about that that the you know you don't have to always interview the big names um, out there it's 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 people are actually interested in real people yeah <laughs> uh, so, not not i'm not saying that the the big names aren't real people by the way it's just well, you know, i think it's it, you can't you know i've done podcasts where we've had really big names on the podcast and they've done nothing you know but a great story will travel further um there's a podcast seth rogan has just released a podcast called story time with seth rogan i think it's story time with seth rogan and the trail is a great example that actually the best story comes from his non-celeb friend who talks about being attacked by a bear. You're like, I want to listen to that podcast. So I think it's really important to be able to dig into people's stories and find the story and, and hear that. And equally, and I'm going to tell you a bit of a secret here, um, which is that, you know, I spend a lot of time marketing my business on the fact that I work with this broadcaster and that broadcaster and look at this big podcast I made I mean we made reality of reality tv with Fleur East last year and I got some feedback recently from someone that was like that was more than one person that said it just doesn't I don't think you wanted to work with me and I realized that what I'm doing is saying I work with these really high-end broadcasters which is great but my passion is for people who don't normally stand up in front of people and speak and people who know that they need to because that's how they'll improve their business. And so I've done myself a bit of a disservice. So it, absolutely, that's in action. That's something that I'm mending right now, which is, you know, getting testimonials and the right kind of marketing from the right people is really important. Isn't that fascinating? I think, yeah. I think, we're, I think we're very similar in that respect because I, I do like, I, I do like working with like uh, corporates or big, big names and, and yeah. it's fun and interesting. But I think my real passion is for the people who are who lack that confidence and self belief, yes. but they have a message and they want to get out there, and I want to help them. And yeah. if we if we kind of keep on talking about the big names out there, that might put them off. Yeah. Uh, so I think I think you're right. Now, mind mindset. Let's talk about mindset. What okay. what is the biggest barrier? Uh, we've talked about lots. I've talked loads about the barriers to going live. 
And I suppose I think, well, there's a, there are obvious barriers with live because you're getting in front of the camera, you're showing your face, it's very scary. And so to me, like podcasting seems far less scary, but yeah. there are still barriers. What, yeah. what, what are the top barriers that you see working with your clients and how do you help them? There are two. One is I'm going to make a fool of myself. Two is um, I don't like the sound of my own voice. Mm. Yeah, I don't know if you know that one as well. Yes. So, and what do I do to help them? I think, well, <laughs> there's a mixture of just pushing <laughs> and then loving. <laughs> so it the thing about podcasting that I really love, when I brought podcasting into the center of what I was doing, what it did was it helped people become confident speakers outside of the podcast. So podcasting really is a safe space. I remember when I did my first, what did I want to do? I wanted to do an online course, which I did when I first started the presenter coach. And I was terrified of getting in front of the camera and terrified of what I might sound like, what I might do. I didn't know quite which direction I was going. I kind of downloaded a Marie Forleo um, uh, online course and thought she was amazing. And I was like, I'm never going to be like that. And so in the end, I just got over myself and went, right, I'm just going to sit at my kitchen table and press record on my MacBook and just film it. And within the first 20 seconds of recording, I went, right, I know what I need to do now. And I think with podcasting, you get that opportunity to go through that because those first few episodes that you make, you don't have to share with anyone. You're just having a go. And most of my clients will do like when we're doing interviews, I'll get them to do interview their colleague first in a studio so they get used to it. And so that's the the gentle push, if you like. And then it's the it's the right. These are really good. This is what you've done and th how we make it better. And I think also the other thing that you fall into with podcasting, and this is the the bit about not doing it live, which is the pre-record, is that you you try and make the last one you did perfect. And I work a lot with people about making the next one you do better and not trying to make the last one you did perfect. Because if you spend the whole time editing out the ums from the last podcast that you did, because you, you think that that's what makes you sound perfect, then you're not actually putting any effort into, as a presenter, dropping your ums for the next one. So I think in answer to your question, I'm just trying to think where you started, but the the main thing is i don't like the sound of my own voice so that take that's time you've got to do it and try it and go around the cycle i'm afraid i'm going to make a fool of myself again do it and try it and go around the cycle it's called a competence confidence cycle you must have heard of that have you heard of that i haven't heard of it but i've i've been there and yeah. it's it's like i never used to like the sound of my own voice i didn't like the way i looked and all this kind of stuff and yeah. you have, i think so many of us even the people that you might not think the, the people that look ultra confident and look amazing, yeah. they're probably struggling with the same kind of stuff oh, that you yeah. are. You know, it's, it's, it's a big, big problem. And I'd, you know, you, you said that you struggled to begin with, with that. You yeah. didn't, I don't know whether you said you didn't like the sound of your own voice, but can you, t if it's all right, can you share maybe your story of how you started with this and how you got over that? So in terms of my own voice, I remember well, it's down to radio. I always wanted to, well, I didn't always want to be a radio. I just remember radio being such an important part of my life when I was younger. And I think I did do that thing of like, I'm going to record this in my bedroom and then having that shock of, oh God, do I sound like that? Because remember when you hear yourself in your head, you've got all the schmoosh of your head <laughs> so you hear through. So it sounds really different when you hear yourself out loud. And, you know, I did that thing of going, oh gosh, aren't I annoying? Oh gosh, I, you know, I'm too exuberant. and. Oh, I've had all sorts of things. I'm too, I, even going on camera, I was thinking this the other day, I did some, uh, I did a, a positivity workshop that got filmed for a company called Food for Thoughts and they sent me the video and the video is great. And they asked me on the spot, can you just do the intro? And I did the intro. We did it three takes, just like you say with your live stuff, just doing it, you just have to do it. And it forces you into that confident space. But before the session, I was really, 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 really nervous. And I think that you don't appreciate, I think people who get nervous about speaking and then don't speak, think that everybody else isn't nervous, but I'm nervous all the time. I was nervous before we pressed go. I was, you know, I was nervous before the last talk I did. I was nervous before, uh, you know, 
everything. Everything I do, I'm nervous before. But the podcast now, I've done it so many times, I'm not nervous before. And I have the chance to edit myself. Um, and in terms of my, the sound of my own voice, gosh, it's really nuanced because I used to, I used to, you know, 20 years ago, I was doing voiceovers for myself for the jingles that I was making and going, oh goodness, I need to take out that bit of frequency of my voice because I've got a really mushy sounding 4K, you know, it's quite detailed, my story, so it probably <laughs> doesn't quite relate. Um, but the main thing is over time, you, oh gosh, it's such a, sorry, I'm thinking as we're going, it's such a process of self-acceptance because your relationship with your voice isn't just about how you sound. It's about who you are. It's about, you know, your history, what, what kind of family you were brought up in, what, what moments you've had in your life where someone said, no, you're, you're, so, you, you know, I got used to get told I was too enthusiastic. You know, can you imagine what that says, <laughs> you know, to, to someone who's young and thinking I might be a presenter? Oh no, I'm too enthusiastic. I can't do that. There's so much involved with your voice that it is a period of doing it, hearing yourself, learning about yourself and allowing that vulnerability to happen. And that's when you start to rely on yourself and back yourself and go, you know what, I do know what I'm talking about. You know, I do come across well, people do like what I'm doing and you start to get into that cycle. So. I, have, I don't think I don't feel like I've really answered your question there because I've you, got a little no, bit you, of self exploration. You myself. have, no, you have, <laughs> and, and that's you. You did exactly what I was hoping you would do, which is is talk through some of that process. And it is it is messy and it, it is, is complicated. Yeah, and you use the word vulnerability there. I think that's the beautiful thing about live video and podcasting yes. that yes. it is about being vulnerable. We've all we've all got some kind of history. I mean, for me, I, I moved up to Scotland. I was bullied because I had an English accent. I got yeah. a Scottish accent pretty quick. Yeah. And then I moved down to England and got bullied because I had a Scottish accent. Yeah. <laughs> so like, we've all got those stories. And ultimately, I think you kind of got to get over yourself and mm. not make it about you because you have a message to share. And people actually will love your voice with all yeah. its flaws and idiosyncrasies. Yeah. That's a big word. But, you know, I think that's important that you just embrace who you are and just focus on that. Would you, would you agree? Yeah, definitely. But that takes time. And that's yeah. why the positivity and the mindset stuff works so well in this performance space. Because what I'm trying to do with these two things is it's about putting the confidence in behind you and giving you the support that you need to go, right, I'm just going to do this because I've got to just do this. Um, and then it's about managing fear. So it's about ma how do you manage that discomfort? How do you get comfortable with that discomfort? When does that discomfort go? And actually, the, for me, in terms of my nerves and my understanding of my capability when I'm presenting in whatever place I'm in, those have come from the moments that were the disasters or the moments that you go, oh, goodness, oh, you know, this is the stuff of nightmares in a way. So at Pods Up North, we run a conference or ran a conference a couple of years ago called Pods Up North and I was organizing it. So I, my prep for my session on voice, it's only going to be a four, half hour, 40 minute session. I'd done it in a way that I never do tell people to do their prep for presentations. Like I just gathered my presentation slides together and thought, you know what, they're there. I know this stuff. I'll just use them to remind me. And then the PowerPoint didn't work. And I literally stood on the side of the stage with the PowerPoint thing in my hand and thought, you're fine, just do this. And I was able to run a whole 40 minute workshop on voice in order, in a way that makes sense, in a way that people benefited from without the prep. And it's it, that's doing it live, right? This is what your experience is when you do things live. You do enough prep and then you go, well, I've just got to let go of this, which you get when you work in radio as well. And doing that actually was a big confidence step for me. And then recently I've um, been experimenting with some uh, live streaming stuff and I got showed the demo. I was gonna do, I've got to do an hour basically. And I got a demo, I, got, I thought I was demoing the dashboard. <laughs> and I got to the dashboard and they went, right, you're gonna start in three minutes. I went, I'm sorry, what? I've not prepped anything. <laughs> They're like, yeah, we're all in the office waiting for you. We're gonna be listening and interacting and what have you. I was like, what? <laughs> but doing it and coming out the other side and going, that went well. And again, same thing as when I did the online course, I know exactly how I would make that better next time. Those are the bits where I gain my confidence. It's like jumping into the pool of very cold water and discovering that once you're in, you get warm. It's fine. You know, it, those are the areas that I grow my confidence. And so I try and do that with my clients in that kind of, here's your support, gentle nudge. Here's your support, gentle nudge. Here's your support, gentle nudge. 
And I like it when they're not prepped. I like it when my clients have done a few episodes when they're prepped and then they go, I haven't prepped for this one. I go, let's go, let's do it. This is a good one. You know, you know the order, <laughs> get the beginning right, get the end right. And then everything else in between, just use your ears and you'll be fine. So, yeah. so it, yeah, it is again, I know we keep talking about it, but it is about doing and then just not expecting you. Can I swear? Well, we, yeah, we could beep it out later. That's fine. <laughs> I'll do the polite version then. So, um, <laughs> Uh, so I, I often say to people that it's about not being afraid to be rubbish. You almost want yeah. to try to be rubbish to start. Yeah. And then that's when, cause you can't, you can't edit a blank page. So you've got to get yeah, something yeah. down to make it better. So just record, just go into your kitchen and record yourself on your phone and see what it sounds like and work out what you need to do to make it make sense. Absolutely. It is about jumping in the deep end a little bit and yeah. it's feeling uncomfortable. It's like, who wants to do exercise? Even like, even like uh, Olympians don't particularly yeah. want to do exercise, but they, no. they do it because they, they need to. And so I, yeah, I love that. Now, MC Leto says, I love that last sentence. This was, this was a, a few minutes ago. So yes, okay. in other words, done is better than perfect and move yeah. on to the next one to get better. Martin on LinkedIn is saying wonderful tips shared. Oh. And Katie is saying, this is really freeing. Thank you. That's yeah, I mean, I, I think what you've you've shared, Kate, is is awesome. So we've we've talked about we've talked a lot about mindset, and that's deliberate. Yeah, because that's that's the biggie. Once you sort that out, you know, Martin. By the way, Martin is Martin Buckland. I'm so excited is coming on the show. We I've keep on to, telling about Martin's uh, story about how he overcome his fear of live, and so we're going to be talking about that in, in a few weeks' time. But let's let's talk about the your three P's and when it comes to actually launching and yeah. planning and and th and then I want to get on to once you've remember actually done it. <laughs> yeah, I'll give you a little a, few, a little time to remember yeah, because yeah, yeah, remember. And, and then I, I would like to talk about how we can then promote and, and grow our audience because podcasting. Uh, one of the things about podcasting is it takes time. This has been my it experience. Does. You know, I remember. Yeah. I knew this would be the case, but I, when I launched my podcast, I knew that it was going to take time. And when I got to about episode 20, it's yeah. still, the numbers weren't quite where I wanted to be. And I, I was starting to feel really depressed. And I went to a conference yeah. and like, I, I wasn't, I, I wasn't going to like, I, I, I told myself, I'm not, I'm going to keep going. I'm going to keep going. I'm going to keep going. But I was, yeah. I was really feeling depressed. And I went to this conference and suddenly like, I met like 10 people who all said, Ian, I love your podcast. I was yeah. thinking, well, why didn't you tell me that last week or the week before when I was about to? Uh. <laughs> and so, yeah, t tell us about the, the, um, the, the P's and then how we can grow our podcast. So I think of there being, with, in terms of, Mm, let's go right back. So you said you've got to be aware of what you want to try to get out of a podcast, right? In every single piece of communication that I ever do, I think, number one, what do I want to get out of it? Number two, what do I want them, the audience to remember? And number three, who are the audience? So it's like, who, who am I speaking to? And what words do I use to make it make sense to them? Um, and so the first thing is like, what do you want to get out of it? And there are kind of three P's, I think, of uh, what you what you get out of a podcast when you make it for your business. Um, obviously, there's popularity. So you kind of grow that you can grow this audience. Um, you can build an audience and build a community that you can really, uh, as I said before, like the content model, content podcast business model is grow the audience, sell things to the audience, right? So it's, a, it's about quantity rather than quality. The thing that works really well for business is the other P, which is prestige. So prestige for me is twofold. It's about becoming an authority in your field. So really understand it, getting people to understand that you know what you're talking about because you are out there talking to the other people. If you do an interview podcast that are doing your thing, you are out there, you know, leading your community, if you like, and going, right, this is what we need to find out to be better at what we do. So you can become an authority and a thought leader by doing it. But also you can enter yourself into awards. So uh, when we've run one awards for the podcast that we've made, it's, it's really, 
it's something to talk about. It gives you an opportunity to get into the papers and all that kind of stuff. It gives you an opportunity to, to talk about it. So it's about kind of that popularity, prestige, and then building your profile, which is the PR part. Now, the best thing, the best thing about podcasts for business people is number one, it gets you better at speaking as I've covered already. But number two, it gives you something to talk about. And this is where the growth can really come into play because what you're doing, if you treat your podcast like the mothership, for example, like in all content marketing models, you have the hero content. It's the thing that you spend a lot of time on and you make it really good. So it could be like once a month we do an hour's video with like Brene Brown or whatever. With a podcast, you can do that at quite a low cost quite a low effort if you like as well she says reluctantly because it is hard work um but you can create that kind of hero content on quite a mass scale and then you can repurpose and it gives you something to get your gives you the opportunity to talk to your audience about things that are in that podcast it gives you content for other platforms and then the other thing that you can do and and that kind of profile element i love it when um some of the clients i work with if they have like a pr working with them they work really hard at getting some of the content from the podcast into like the papers. So I love it when I loved it at the beginning of um, lockdown, when one of my podcast events that made me, we had uh, S- Sally Lindsay on talking about how she wouldn't go into the I was celebrity because she didn't like prawns. <laughs> and that was all over the papers. I was like, this is, you know, that's not a story, but it is a story. So I think it's long gone that papers don't have an interest in podcasting. They definitely do. One thing I would say is that, you know, in terms of growing, this is what you asked me about initially, wasn't it? The, mm. the grow, growth part. One thing that is really, really clear when we, um, you know, the reason I say those three things, like if you get into the papers with your podcast, that is not going to drive your podcast audience. Time and time again, I do not see it having an impact in terms of audience. Time and time again, I have it see it having an impact in terms of, profile, what things you could say, bringing in other clients, but not audience to your podcast. What brings in audience to your podcast is big guests doing what they should do and promoting your podcast. So you get that spike and then you hope to hold on to people. Um, being in digital spaces. So making sure that you are um, in the spaces in a digital sense, uh, you know, where, where, where your audience are. So guesting on other podcasts is a really clear way to grow an audience. Uh, for your own podcast, because they're list- they're podcast listeners, so they then go and check out your podcast. And then, uh, in terms of um, you know driving that podcast audience as well, it's as I said, like actually, every single person that listens to your podcast is one person, and so if you can look after that one person really well, they will tell a friend about you, and that's actually how you grow a podcast. You need that recommendation from one person to another, and. You know, it's funny, even if you get reviews in the, you know, I've had podcasts that have had reviews and you don't see an impact on the numbers. It's not like it goes ping like that. Radio interviews, t- TV interviews have a bit of an impact. But, you know, we're all, you know, at that point, we're talking about Kath Tilsley on Good Morning Britain saying, here's the podcast. You know, that's a big deal. So, of course, people are going to listen. But, yeah, so those I think those are, the, for me, the really three key ways to really grow an audience. But I would be really focusing in on how you look after and capture the audience that you have when it comes to your business. So, you know, the benefits we see are it drives people back to websites um, and that then helps with the client leads and the client sales. And um, it really builds on that authority. So people out there talking, you know, like I am now, you know, people hear me talking about podcasts and what I understand. Hopefully that means that they think, oh, it's worth checking her out, you know, and that's how you drive the leads and the sales. So important, that community mm. and making people feel special. And yeah, I've definitely people. seen that. I mean, we've got wonderful people that are involved with the live show. That's one reason why I love live, because there is more of that interaction. Yes. Oh, goodness, it's great, isn't it? it? It is amazing. Now, that's one thing that you don't have with podcasting. And yeah. I, I would love it. If you are listening to the podcast, I'd love you to get in touch and say hello um, and let let me know how I can support you and help you. And one way to do that, of course, is to come over to, and watch uh, one of the live shows. And you can do that by going to confident.live forward slash subscribe. Um, so that this year for me is the year of community and community is hard. It is, it is it's hard. It's really it, hard. Um, 
Now, Katie says, I need to listen to this again. Billions of gold nuggets. <laughs> I love that. And it's true. It is true. I think what you said, Kate, I, it, do you ever feel like this, that what you're saying at the moment, well, yeah, I'm not saying anything like special at the moment. This is just, this is, everyone knows oh, this. <laughs> but actually it, it's, it's funny, isn't it? Because actually seriously, what you have said, Kate, is, is, it is amazing. And it's so, so important. Um, how, have you got any tips for us when it comes to community? Because you've just said community uh, building is, is difficult. Uh, and then what you've said makes sense. Make make your audience feel special. But how do you actually do that in practice? Have you got any tips for us when we're talking on our podcasts or uh, if we're going um, out in the digital space or whatever it is? How can we actually do that in, in a practical sense? Well, I think the key thing is places like... I think, I mean, this is an area that it's not easy. Followers on Instagram, followers on Facebook pages are great. In using ways to engage is important because actually if you get them talking back to you, that's what you want. You want people talking back to you, you want that community done. But with everyday positivity, the thing that really changed everything was the Facebook group. Changed everything. The fact that we have a place where the audience will come and I can talk to them. So I'll bob a message every, you know, I work really hard at, I need to be in that community talking back to people all the time. They can post things in the Facebook group. It's called Everyday Positivity with Kate Cocker if you want to come and find us. Um, and I do monthly hangouts now as well. So I do a free kind of, uh, we do almost like a group coaching session once a month. And what I use that for is it's a really lovely space to go, to get a sense of what's this audience doing right now and what do they need? You know, and, and that is really important and really powerful to improve the content, to improve the offering. You know, I'm now starting to offer things like coaching through everyday positivity. I'm doing events through everyday positivity. So again, that's another revenue stream. Um, and it's a real kind of, for me, everyday positivity is absolutely the, the, the ground at which I go, what works, what doesn't in terms of how I can mirror that onto other podcasts. So it's that capturing and you know i've built we've got a mailing list with everyday positivity now so i'm emailing them every once a month and you know actually my personal email list for the presenter coach needs a lot of work so it's to me the building of community can only happen if you've got them in one place and that's why the facebook group works so beautifully that's why a mailing list works so beautifully um and what you'll find is that you get that little triangle so you know the, there's people at the peak who will be with you and you know you say jump and they will jump um and they will do anything for, for your podcast they'll be really they'll be really dedicated and then there's sort of a layer below and what's really interesting with everyday positivity is i've done it so long now i can see there's almost like waves so there are some people that come and they love you for a period of time and then they kind of they sort of seem to disappear and then they, but then the next wave of people come along so if you're thinking a bit like that and you're thinking right what is it that the community needs how can i serve them beyond the podcast even if it's just a quick hey how are you uh in your facebook group those are the things that you know the podcast is something for people to gather around but you kind of need a place to capture that gathering and so that's how i think you grow community you have you have ways of them feeling like they're part of the gang and and the podcast is great for that because you can slip into i mean you may have them yourself sort of little i can't what they call you know like we did a an event once and it became all about the stickers, you know, send you community stickers. And I made a sticker saying, send them stickers. You know, it's it's those things, those moments that you have with your audience that you share that then become the bit that they talk about or the language that they use. So my lot, like for Everyday Positivity, I often end an episode with, you've got this. And they, so they all love that. They, you know, in the podcast, you know, they'll end words, they'll end stuff with it. And when I talk to, sorry, end posts with it. When I talk to them and I'm like, should we do a mug? They're like, yeah, let's make a mug. Can it be a you've got this mug? You know, it's that stuff really makes a difference, I think, in terms of the growth of the podcast. Absolutely. Having a home, I think, is really yes, important. Yes, thank for you. That. Ugh, that was an easy way to say it. <laughs> <laughs> FC Luther says call to actions, I suppose, is a, maybe a good thing yes, as well. You know, yes, having a definitely. call to action, but making it easy for people to get involved, whether that's yeah. in a live or podcast or yeah. Facebook group, uh, that kind yeah. of thing. Absolutely right. Just as before we finish, uh, because we are, we've almost run out of time. Uh, oh. Just a quick thought on, you know, on getting onto other people's podcasts, because that was yes. one of the things that you said. Yes. And I get all these emails from people and they're all so badly, you know, like I've yeah, never right. heard of these people. So we, there's a lot of ne negative side of things. Um, 
but it does reaching out to people can work but what's the best way to try and become a guest on somebody's podcast so you can tell this is a place in the podcast industry that has become you know guesting has become a thing because there are companies out there now that will do this work for you so you can find a company that will help you get onto x number of podcasts a month or whatever it it, it can really vary the thing that you need to make sure that you have if you are going to go onto someone else's podcast is a clear reason and a clear understanding of that audience as well. So I get those three questions I said really work. Like, what do you want to get out of going on other people's podcasts? So is it that you want to sell your podcast? Is it that you want to sell a product? Is it that you want to improve your profile? Is it What is it that you want out of it? Be really clear on that. And that can be a secret mission. You don't have to tell other people about that. Uh, what do you want the listeners to remember? And what do you want to what one thing um, and who is that audience? So, you know, I know that the people that you're talking to will be interested in how to speak confidently on podcasting. So it makes sense for me to be on this podcast. Right. And then in terms of going and pitching yourself, having a clarity around that. So what's the what's your story? What are you going to bring? What kind of questions could the host ask you? You know, what's your biog? And, and and get in touch with a good pitch rather than, hi, I like your podcast. Can I come on it, please? It's like, make it easy for me to put you on my podcast. I'll come on your podcast and I'll be able to help you with X, Y, Z, or I can tell your audience this X, Y, Z. And it makes sense for me to be here because this X, Y, Z. You know, I think as someone who runs a podcast, that must make it easier for you, right? Yeah, uh, it does. And I think the other thing is, it makes things so much easier if I feel I already know the person, if they've actually interacted yeah. with me on yeah. social. It's kind of like oh, any good, form yeah. of relationship, I think. You know, when you, I don't know, you might fancy somebody. You don't just go to them and ask them to marry you. Hi. You, you yeah. know, you just like, you you interact with them slowly and they, you say, hello, I'm here. And and, and you, yeah. you do things for them uh, first. And, and so, yeah, I think it's, it's building a relationship. But no, I love that. Well, we are out of time, Kate. We, I think oh. f- feel we could talk so much longer about all of this, but you've been amazing today. I think this has been a, such a valuable episode. Um, oh, how can people find out more about you? You mentioned, re- remind us of the Facebook group, of, first of all. Oh, well, you can come and find the Facebook group, Everyday Positivity with Kate Cocker. Uh, you have to search in groups, don't search in pages. People get stuck at that point. Um, the podcast itself is called Everyday Positivity. So that's everywhere that you can get a podcast is everywhere. You can also ask your Amazon Echo to open Everyday Positivity. That's quite exciting. Uh, But for presenter coaching and for podcast coaching, the best place to go is to thepresentercoach.co.uk. And you're very welcome to drop me an email, kate at thepresentercoach.co.uk. And you can find me there as well. And um, I've got masterclasses coming up and I've got some power hours that uh, are on the website as well. So feel free to, to jump on one of those if you want to talk podcasts. Awesome. That's that's exciting. I can tell you've been living in the north for a long time because it's not master. It's not it's not master classes. It's it's master classes. Well, uh, I can tell you a little <laughs> story about that because Mr. Cocker, who used to do the Exeter Manchester Breakfast Show, uh, said that as soon as he went on the radio in the north, he started saying bath and grass because he thought it was rude not to. <laughs> 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 oh, that's so he funny. changes A very quickly. <laughs> Isn't that funny? And now he says rugby, which is quite R- oh, funny. Rugby. Rugby. <laughs> rugby. Oh, rugby. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's, it's yeah, and you can, sometimes you can go halfway and go master class or something yeah, like that when I you know. get very confused. But anyway, thank you, Kate. It's been awesome. Uh, do check out Kate's website and uh, uh, Facebook group and all that kind of stuff. And of course, you've got her email address if you want to get in touch. It's been awesome to be here today. Thank you so much for everyone who's been uh, watching live, for you listening to this podcast. Thank you so much for plugging us into your ears and spending this time with us. Really don't take that for granted. Remember, next episode, next Friday, if you're listening to the podcast, or next this Thursday, if you're watching live, we've got Ash Borland on talking about how to stand out from your competition. I can't wait for that episode. But until next time, I encourage you to level up your impact, authority, and profits through the power of confident live video. See you soon. Bye. 
Thanks for watching the Confident Live Marketing Show with Ian Anderson Gray. Make sure you subscribe at iag.me forward slash podcast so you can continue to level up your impact, authority, and profits through the power of live video. And until next time, see the loo.